So Joan, thank you for reading that portion of scripture to us this morning. Uh, We're going to press that reset button again this morning and we're going to revisit something that should be part of our daily walk and that is indeed prayer and how God our Father listens to us and listens to every detail of our prayers and all that's going on within us. So when you know for sure that God listens to you and to your prayers, you can pray with such more confidence and conviction, knowing that he will answer 1 John chapter 5 and verses 13 to 15. How many times have you either got frustrated or told off when you were supposed to be listening to someone, or someone was supposed to be listening to you, but you knew rightly that they weren't listening or taking in a word that you were saying? When I listen to someone, when I listen to you, when you listen to me, listening communicates value. It says to someone, I have time for you. I'm interested in you. I'm interested in what you're saying to me because what you say matters to me because you matter to me and I am listening to you because I care for you. That's what listening communicates. Did you know that God listens? And folks, it's such an incredible truth if you really stop to think about what we've just been saying. We are talking about the living God who has thrown billions of stars into space, who knows each of those stars by name. We're talking about a God who keeps the galaxies in motion, who organises and upholds our entire universe, who gives life to every one of the 7.5 billion people alive on planet Earth at this moment. That this God, this God has time for you. This God listens to you. This God cares about you. And that is incredible. Let me read some verses from some of the Psalms to indeed indicate that incredible truth and to allow it to sink not only into our minds but into our hearts. I also want to say that the Psalms are jam-packed, full of verses like these. I mean, we could read through Psalm 3, 4 and 5 just as one example and again and again and again you will hear this truth again and again. So let me try and process these verses as I read through them for you of how God listens. When I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me the strength I need. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me, freeing me from all my fears. I cried out to the Lord in my suffering and he heard me. He has set me free from all my fears. The Lord hears when his people call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Isn't that lovely? I just lay my request before you and then I wait expectantly just to see your answers, Lord to my prayers. I mean, is that not a lovely way to come to God in prayer? What an encouragement to pray. And yet the truth is that if you scrape below the surface, many of us have so many doubts which rob us of the confidence in prayer, rob us of our joy in prayer, rob us of our passion and our determination to pray. It's so easy to let doubts rob you. Now folks, We need to be absolutely sure and certain that our God is going to listen when we pray, that our God loves it when we pray, that our God answers prayer and changes us and changes situations because we're praying about them. Prayer is so powerful because God is so powerful, because our Heavenly Father listens and delights to answer when we call. So I want us this morning to look at 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 to 15, and three things that I want to say very simply. The first being this, that God wants us to be absolutely sure and certain that we are his precious adopted children, and we have a living, loving relationship with him through his son Jesus, verse 13. You see, that's why you need to read verse 13 before we come to verse 14, where it says, I write these things to you who believe in the Son of God so that you may know you might have the assurance for sure that you have in your possession eternal life. Most people think of eternal life 
as something you receive after you die and that you go on living with God in heaven. But that's not what the Bible means by eternal life. Eternal life is more like a quality of life. It's more like if I talk to you about married life, a relationship. So eternal life is about a quality of life that comes out of the relationship that you have with someone you love. So eternal life is the life that flows and overflows in you and out of you because of that relationship that you have and you love and you enjoy with your heavenly Father through saving faith in his son Jesus. So John 17 verse 3 says, Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So that's what eternal life is. What John's saying here is that I want you to be absolutely sure and certain as Christians that you are God's precious and deeply loved adopted sons and daughters, forgiven, brought into this lovely relationship with God. And I want you to be absolutely sure and certain that you have been saved, you've been forgiven, your guilt has been washed away, and now through Jesus you've been brought right into God's very own family. And he loves you in the most precious kind of way as his adopted sons and daughters. Because it's true, you know, that sin always creates barriers between us and God. It creates a wall, it creates a blockage between us and God. Again, have you ever tried to pray when you feel guilty? And what happens? You just kind of feel this invisible wall because you and your Heavenly Father between us. And, and that's why when you ask for forgiveness and you confess your sins and you repent of them, it's like that invisible wall goes and there's just that lovely relationship restored between you and God. And so Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear when you pray. So why is it that sometimes we feel, does God ever listen to our prayers? Why is he not hearing our prayers? Why is he not answering our prayers? Why is there this wall? Why does it feel like our prayers are bouncing off the ceiling? Well, sometimes it's because, yeah, there is stuff in our lives, there's sin in our hearts that we have never really turned from or broken with. And even as Christians, there can be blockages that can build up. And what we need to do is just come back to God through Jesus by the way of the cross, knowing that he longs for you to come into his presence and enjoy his presence and experience his love and affection for you. So what is prayer? Prayer is little children talking to their heavenly father and Jesus makes it possible. So what's the two challenge questions at the end of point one? Have you grasped just how much you are loved and welcomed in your Heavenly Father's presence? And two, is there sin in your life that you need to turn from and break with so that those barriers can come tumbling down between you and your Heavenly Father? Number two, God wants us to be absolutely sure and certain that when we come into his presence and pray that he listens and he hears when we pray in line with his will. You know, how many Christians have you met who are nervous, hesitant, unsure about praying? You talk to them and you discover that they feel they're not good enough, that their prayers aren't good enough. They feel that they'll never know what to pray or what to say. And perhaps that's even how you feel this morning. Well, the good news is that John is writing these words to you. He's writing these words to encourage you. He's writing these words to strengthen you. He's writing these words to lift you. And he's writing these words to give you a whole new confidence and boldness when you come into God's presence and you just open your heart in prayer. And what he's trying to say to you is, look, you are God's precious adopted sons and daughters. Of course you're welcomed into your Father's presence. Of course it thrills him and it delights him to see you come into his presence and pray and talk to him about the things that are going on in your heart. And just open your heart to him and share with him the joys, the struggles, the ups and the downs. And verse 14 says, this is the confidence it's the third time actually in the book that he's used this word. He's big on giving us confidence. It actually means boldness in speaking. 
And what he's saying is that this is the boldness we have when we come and we speak to God in approaching God and coming into his presence, that if we ask anything according to his will, listen, he hears. I mean, is that not an encouragement this morning? That we come confidently, not reluctantly to God in prayer, but we come boldly. Not nervously, but we come and speak openly, freely to your loving Heavenly Father about anything, about everything that's on your heart today. You know, Jeremiah, an Old Testament prophet did. He was a man who meant what he said and said what he meant to God in his prayers. In his desperation, Jeremiah complains openly to God many times in his prayers. And you'll see that if you read through the whole book of Jeremiah. And here's the wonderful thing, that God does not in any way reprove or rebuke him for his straight and often strong words, sometimes delivered to God with a judgmental tone. He meant what he said, and he said what he meant. But God knew his heart and the longings within Jeremiah's heart. And folks, I want to say, because God loves you, he loves to listen to your prayers. He hears you. He hears exactly what you're saying. He hears what you're saying with your words. And do you know something? He hears what's behind those words. He knows what's behind the requests and the fears that are behind the requests. Sometimes we hear babies cry at church, but we don't know what they're trying to say or tell us. You know, God hears the cries of your heart, and he can interpret those cries. You can't interpret what that baby is saying. But when people pray, when they cry to God from their hearts, I want to say God knows exactly what you are saying. And I just think that thought too is so beautiful. I think it's so powerful. I just felt it was God that he's speaking to us and he's saying to us, I hear the cries of your heart. It doesn't matter if you don't put them into great words or any words. That doesn't really bother God because he is able to interpret, because he knows your heart. He hears your heart today. It's your heart that he's really concerned about. And wouldn't you grow in confidence in prayer if you really believe that, that you could pray about anything, that God will hear your prayers and that he will answer them. I mean, wouldn't that be amazing that you can pray about anything this morning? Of course there is that provision, isn't there? This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything, and here's the wee provision according to his will, that he hears us. That when we ask God about something, we must be willing to say, Lord, I want this, but I want this only if this is best for me. I want this if this is according to your will and your purposes and your plan for me and for my life. You know, sometimes I don't know about you, but I would say at times I tried to manipulate God. I tried to get him to do things that I wanted him to do, and I got frustrated when he didn't do them. We try to get him to do our will sometimes. We try to get our own way by praying. And and yet God says, no, that's not how it works. I want you in prayer to come in and let's have a conversation. Let's open our hearts. God says, open your heart to me in prayer. And as you talk through with me your hopes and your fears and your longings and your joys and your desires, and as we talk them through together, and as you listen to me, will you align your will with my will? Will you come to a place where you will say to me, Lord, at the end of the day, I only want what you want for my life. Well, isn't that a lovely prayer? Lord, at the end of the day, I only want what you want for my life because you know best. Also, I want to say there's a battle that goes on in prayer to bring your life under God, to surrender and to pray that prayer that Jesus prayed. And what did he say? Your will be done. Not my will, Father, but your will. And at the end of the day, I only want what you want for me, because that is the best. And you know, something happens when you really engage with God in prayer. He changes you. He changes you more and more, so that more and more you will begin to want what he wants for you. 
more and more you will begin to ask for the things that are aligned with his plans and his purposes for you and for your life. More and more your heart will become tuned into his heart. So what's the challenge questions at the end of point two? Do you really believe that your heavenly father delights, smiles to see you coming into his presence in prayer? And number two, and do you want his will for your life and the things that you're praying about right now? Have you surrendered your will to his? And folks, that's a really important question. Do you really want God's will for your life in those things that you're praying for? Really, wholeheartedly want his will for your life? Number three, and finally, God wants us to be absolutely sure and certain that when he hears our prayers, he answers them, and we will receive what he indeed have asked of him. Verse 15, very difficult verse. It won't make much sense to you, but here it is. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. That's complicated, isn't it? You know, sometimes I prayed with and for people that I really believe God was going to heal. And I've really prayed and really believed that they are going to be healed, and they weren't. And it sometimes just leaves you devastated as a result. And folks over the years have seen that happen on a number of occasions where I've become so emotionally involved and it's been sometimes so painful that as you've prayed those prayers and you haven't maybe seen them answered. It's been devastating. But it was just that maybe I was so emotionally involved that I couldn't, couldn't sort out what was my longings and what was God's will. Whatever verse 15 is saying, it's never the case that we always get what we ask for. But I want to say this to you, that our Heavenly Father is such a good parent to us. Thankfully, he doesn't always give us what we ask for. It was Billy Graham's wife, Ruth, who said, I'm so thankful that God doesn't answer all my prayers because I would have married the wrong man three different times. Well, thankfully, he doesn't give us everything we ask for. But remember this, the Apostle John is writing to you to assure you, to convince you that God really listens to you when you pray. He really hears you when you pray. He really answers you when you pray. That's what he's trying to say to you so clearly, so that when you pray to your Heavenly Father today about something, really believe that he is listening to you, that he can multitask, that he hears exactly what you're saying. He not only hears your words, but behind the words, he hears your heart, and that he already is answering your prayers, even as you speak, even though the answer may be delayed sometimes. If you really believe those things, would you pray with greater confidence, with greater conviction than you've ever done before? Look, God can do anything, you know. Nothing is impossible for our God. And I want to say to you in closing that God cares for you. So you can really come to him in prayer and cast all your cares upon him. And God listens, and he is listening now. So come with confidence, come with boldness, come and speak to him, open your heart. Don't just tell him what he must do for you. Engage in a relationship with him. Enjoy him. Let him shape your will. Let him bring your will into line with his. And then stand back and see the answers. So the question, isn't it absolutely marvelous that God listens, hears, and answers your prayers? How does that make you feel this morning? But shall we do that now? Shall we pray? And shall we just again open our hearts and surrender those things that you'd love to tell him about. Let's take a moment to do that. Let's pray. So Father God, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for what you've been saying to us this morning. We've been listening. And thank you that you're the God who listens to us and listens beyond our words and listens to our hearts cry. And for each one of us, Lord, we deliberately do that now. We surrender those things that we've been praying for, maybe for a long time, we surrender those things that have been on our hearts recently that we've been praying for. We s indeed surrender those things that we're praying for today. And we ask that we will be aligning with your will. We will be tuning into your heart. That we will be patient as we wait for those answers. And that we will surrender ourselves because that is the ultimate point of surrender and we will allow you to answer and to work in your ways. 
for your ways are perfect, Lord. So thank you for your word this morning. Continue to let it live in our hearts. And this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to this worship song.